How to Get the Most Accessibility Out of a Design System by Steve Barnett. 10 Years of Alibytes 2022. How to Get the Most Accessibility Out of a Design System. Let's just quickly clarify what we mean by design system. Things like Twitter's Bootstrap, IBM's Carbon, Google's Material, and Shopify's Polaris. These are all collections of components and patterns and other things to help people build user interfaces more efficiently and more consistently, and hopefully more accessibly. The most important thing I'd like you to take away from this talk is that we need to be a little bit careful about how we put these pieces together. Hello, I am Steve. Currently, I'm a Technical Digital Accessibility Analyst at Xero in Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. And before that, I was doing front-end development and user experience at Totara Learning Systems. If you want to find me on the World Wide Web, I'm at naga.co.za. That's N-A-G-A .co.za. Caution, a flawed and overused analogy is approaching at high speed. A design system is a bit like a box of Lego. Here's a picture of some Lego instructions. A cute little duck. It contains the bricks, how many and what types. It contains the instructions, numbered steps for making the duck. And it shows a picture of the finished duck thing. Duck. It's a duck. So with Lego, it's three steps maybe. Make the thing with the bricks and instructions. Check the thing against the picture. And then sometimes improve the product with some feedback. If we apply this to design systems, we get a similar kind of three things. We can make the thing with the components and the documentation. We can check the thing against the examples, and we can improve the system with feedback. Agenda. First of all, we're going to look at accessibility going forwards, the make part. Then we're going to look at accessibility going backwards, the check part. And finally, we'll have a quick look at accessibility going onwards, the improve part. Chapter one, accessibility going forwards, make. When we're making with Lego, it's mostly about using the right bricks in the right place. When we're making with a design system, it's about using the right components. So we want to use semantic elements. So if we have something that performs an action, we probably want to use a button. If we've got something that's for navigation, we probably want to use a link. If we're collecting data, we probably want to use form elements. There's a little bit of a wobble there. So things like radios and checkboxes, we can use them to perform actions in the UI. You know, you select a radio and then something changes. But we probably want to be a bit careful with that because buttons really are for performing actions and form elements really are for collecting data. Another thing we want to do when we're making with a design system is to use the components in the right place. That means putting things in helpful containers. If we've got a couple of radio buttons, we might want to put them in a container that gives a context for that choice, like a field set and legend if you're doing some HTML stuff, or RE attributes to say, here's the context and then here's the radios. We also want to be careful with nesting. Let's say we have a card component that's a link wrapping a block. What if we then put a button inside that? Well, now we've got an interactive element inside another interactive element, a button inside a link. This stands to be confusing for humans and for the technology that's delivering this web page to the humans. So we probably want to avoid it. What else about making with Lego? Well, it's also about following the instructions. With a design system, that kind of means following the documentation. That might be giving us advice on good text for buttons, should describe the action. That might be giving advice on good text for links, should describe the destination. And it might be um, offering us some advice on when we have a choice to make about which one is maybe better or worse. For instance, for form fields, it might say we prefer the label elements with a visible label over the ARIA attribute, ARIA label, both of which provide an accessible name. But one is kind of slightly better and more broadly supported. So that was accessibility going forwards, the make part. Chapter two, accessibility going backwards, the check part. 
Checking with Lego is mostly about comparing to the picture. Does it look like the duck in that little photograph? Checking with the design system is more about comparing to the examples. So we probably want to check the accessible names, the accessible roles of the thing that we've made. I found um, one thing that's useful with this is to run a quick automated test, maybe Axe DevTools. Um, automated tests are good for catching errors and omissions. So something that we did wrong, like we uh, there's a typo or we use the wrong attribute in the wrong place, um, or omissions. Did we forget to give a field an accessible name? Did we forget to provide a text alternative for a bit of non-text content like an image or a video? Maybe you're thinking, hmm, how do I check the accessible name and role? Well, this is built into the dev tools of browsers. Here's a screenshot of Firefox. When you inspect accessibility properties with Firefox, it shows you in the dev tools the accessibility tree and a panel called properties, which shows you the name and role and some other stuff. If you can hover over um, an element like a form field, it will also show you the accessible name there. In Chrome, it's similar, but slightly different. In the DevTools, there's a tab called Accessibility. And in there, there's a panel called Computed Properties, which shows you the name and the role, and a bit more information about where the name came from. When you hover with Chrome, you get a bit more information than in Firefox. You get the accessible name, role, and if it's keyboard focusable or not. Checking with Lego is also about finding where the problem is, if there's a problem. Maybe it's with the bricks. Um, are they all there? Are some of them broken? Did I use the right ones? Maybe it's about the instructions. Did I follow all the steps? Did I miss something? Or maybe we just decided not to make a duck. We decided to make a sports car that's colored like a duck. Checking with the design system is about finding where the problem is. Maybe there's a bug in the design system. Uh, maybe we didn't use the design system in quite the intended way, so something went a bit off the rails there. Or maybe it's actually not about the design system. Maybe it's just something custom that we did, um, and it's something for us to take a look at and fix. So that was accessibility going backwards, the check part. Chapter three, accessibility going onwards, the improve part. Improving with Lego is, well, it's like cu conducting customer service. You know, were there some broken bricks or missing bricks in your box? Or were the instructions a bit unclear and could do with a bit of tweaking? Improving with a design system uh, could be a number of things. Could be giving feedback on the components. Um, we can report any bugs we find. And we can, if we're feeling extra um, useful, and we can, it's nice to offer suggestions for the fixes too. Another thing we can do improving a design system is to give feedback on using the components. Um, say what was easy or hard about combining things. Like I couldn't find the bit where I was able to add an accessible name to my group of radios or something like this. And again, offering suggestions for improvements or ideas uh, can be very useful and can speed things up and make it feel more like a community effort. Another thing we can do for improving a design system is to give feedback on the documentation. If we can let the team know what was most helpful, that's really great. You know, letting them know what a good job they're doing and how much we appreciate it. There might also be bits where it wasn't quite clear what was happening, or you feel like a bit more detail would have been useful. That's also good information for the design system team to have. Recap. Talked about three things. Accessibility going forwards, the make part. Then accessibility going backwards, the check part, and finally, accessibility going onwards, the improve part. The most important thing I'd like you to take away from this talk is that we need to be a little bit careful about how we put the pieces together. Thanks for listening. Celebrating 10 years, Alibytes 2022.